From lockdowns to limited guests allowed to businesses shutting down, the food services industry had to go through a lot in 2020, be it food manufacturers, packed food manufacturers, restaurants or caterers. But it's not over yet. 2021 has still some problems looming from the past over. And a major and a sudden problem we are facing and just resurfacing right now is the sudden shortage of food ingredients all across the globe and especially here in Australia. Today we have with us a subject matter expert who will be shedding some light on this particular topic. We have Prableen, the co-founder of Knox Foods. Welcome Prableen. Thank you. Hi, my name is Prableen. We at Knox Foods are a major importer and distributor of food ingredients all across Australia. We deal in the food services sector. Prableen, let's dive right into the issue. Mm -hmm. Why is there such a sudden shortage of food ingredients all across the globe and especially in Australia? Um, the real reason for this shortage is actually the lack of containers, shipping containers worldwide. Okay. So you're saying just because there are no actual metal containers, mm -hmm. there's a shortage. Can you please elaborate onto that? Yes, so basically after March last year, after mm -hmm. COVID hit, mm -hmm. there was a worldwide lockdown and right. there was a labor shortage, right. which has resulted in a huge container shortage as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you mean the lockdown had a lot to do yes. with the current shortage? Correct. All right. Uh, how did that start? Um, so basically, worldwide lockdown meant that there was a reduction in the employment, as in that a lot of people had to be made redundant. And a lot of businesses that were making these people redundant also went under. And this could include businesses that were importing goods, and that means there were a lot of shipping containers that were now stranded at the port. But from the port's perspective, this also meant that they had less number of people to unload those containers. And this meant that if the containers are not getting unloaded, they are not going to the consignee, as in the receiver of the container, to unpack it. And if it's not unpacked in time, then it can't come back in time to go somewhere else in the world to be filled up with more goods. As a result, we don't have enough containers. So Prableen, is it correct to say that the whole absence of right amount of labor caused mm -hmm. some kind of a butterfly effect, which from 2020 has come into 2021? Oh yeah, 100%. It, it, it is the main factor that is driving all of this, the labour shortage. We don't have enough people at ports to help unload the containers. We don't have enough people at warehouses to unpack those containers that are eventually coming. And similarly, we don't have enough drivers that are inland, especially if you look at a country like USA. They have a lot of containers going inland. We don't have enough drivers to get those containers there and as a result, the containers are just stranded on the port. So this is nothing to do with any shortage of crop or nothing to do with any problems with the virus actually affecting the yield? No, not as such, not on the face of it anyway. The major problem does remain the labour problem, which is driving the congestion at ports. Because again, there is not enough people at the ports to unload, to resend, and there's a lot of transshipment going on as well because shipping line companies want to send things directly but because of the labor problem things are not getting unloaded so they have to send them via other ports okay. and now because there are so many containers stranded on those ports there's a worldwide congestion as well probably one must ask in the past few months was there anything that aggravated this problem and added to it Definitely. Um, I think if you look at the situation that happened around the September time for Christmas mm -hmm. peak period. So as we all know, China obviously bounced back fairly early. They were able to get a control of the situation. Mm -hmm. um, this meant that they were booking a lot of empty containers to go to US mm -hmm. for the Christmas time, which they do every year. Mm -hmm. But in in what happened during that time is that usually there's plenty of labor and there's plenty of people to help out unload those containers and they come back in time. But this year that didn't happen. Okay. So as a result, the congestion only got worse at the ports. Okay. So, and to add to that, the shipping time from China to the US and then the unloading time mm -hmm. and then the lack of labor, yep. majorly added to the world's problems mm -hmm. single-handedly. That's right. Oh, okay. That's, That's right. really interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's go a little micro and understand. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. What is the current situation with respect to Australia? Um, with respect to Australia, there is a huge shortage and there is also a very huge increase in the ocean freight. Mm. What I mean by ocean freight is, um, and just a very simple example, is that if something coming from a specific port in China, say Beijing, to Sydney would at one point costed us $500, just as an example, is now costing us over two thousand. No, so that is yeah. approximately four times of the regular Correct. cost. Correct. Correct. And that is just one component of yes. importing. Yep, that is only one component of importing. Uh, importing. Um, we, as importers, are also paying congestion surcharge because, as I mentioned before, the ports are really congested at the moment. So there is a surcharge being applied for that as well. And in addition, these are there is increased freight costs. Right. Now, Prabhleen, do you see this as a really long-term problem for Australia, especially with the importing problems? I think we can't really put a proper time frame to it. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, in my past experience, what I have seen is that things ease over time, especially after Christmas has passed, Chinese New Year has passed. Um, but again, we can't really put a proper time frame to this and say that this will be better next month or the month after. Because the reality is that the ports are very congested at the moment and a congestion of this level will need time. But I would think that after the Chinese New Year next month, things should start to ease down a little bit. So tell us that what should we expect at least in the next three to four months which is comparatively a shorter timeline yeah any anything we should be aware of so that as a consumer as a consumer absolutely as a consumer i believe you need to be aware that there could be higher prices for things that you consume on a day-to-day -day basis and there could be shortage of those as well. That doesn't mean that, you know, we go and start collecting them now, no. We're all working very closely to ensure that you don't run out of anything. But the increased prices are definitely something that are looking like the only way we can to sustain at the moment. Right, so from what you said, rather, it occurs to me as instead of hoarding right now and stocking up, mm -hmm. I think people should be more judicious right now because the prices are anyways perhaps about to increase all across the imports. Right. Yeah, that, that's correct. Um, there is no point in hoarding at all. Um, and the type of industries that we deal in, the space is a huge issue. So they mm -hmm. actually physically will not be able to hoard things. I think the better solution would actually be for them to work very closely with us and give us a forecast of what they use, how much they use, and then we can all work together at a proper plan so it's sustainable and the price increases don't hurt any of us as much. So I'll, I'll come to the last question. I think you just led us a little into it, mm -hmm. but let's talk more about what can today's consumers like me or even businesses do yeah. to help out with this situation along with the government support? Um, I think the food manufacturers, caterers, packed food manufacturers, restaurants, um, they need to forecast their demands on time of how much product they would go through in the next few months. So their shipments can be planned accordingly, the suppliers overseas can be made aware, right. and the shipping companies can be made aware, and that will make everyone's lives easier. Right. And the other thing is that the payments, we all need to work together so everyone is being paid on time and that way we can increase the goods that are coming in and it makes everyone's life easier as well because they can stock up more. As an importer, I'm happy to stock up more for you if we've got that proper payment plan right. in place. Right, so that was Prabhleen with us who talked about why is there a sudden shortage of food ingredients and perhaps it is expected to stay for a few more months and thanks to her we have a few solutions we can practice. One we need to forecast our needs, especially business to business. Second, to set proper payment plans so that the money is rolling into the economy and there is no congestion around there. And the third is do not hoard. I think this is a time you all need to come together and work through this. And I think we'll get through around that. Thank you, Prabhleen. Thank you.